Hello and welcome to this tutorial about USPEX and VASP integration to the GDS visualization software. So GDS doesn't have much requirements and it should have been installed already but let me explain its installation anyway. We first need to get the latest GDS sources using the git repository so from my place it can be quite unstable, so please use the official repository at the following address. Now, from the downloaded GDIS directory, we can use the provided install script. Here I select GUI and no installation and after some time After some time, GDs will be created. It will then be in the bin directory. Now, GDs is a very fast software with a lot of functions and supported formats, which I will let you discover by yourself. GDIS come with some example files which can be open all at once. This is a 103 example files open in about a second. We can display 3D periodic system, morphology or equilibrium crystal shapes, three D periodic system from vast calculation or optimization for which each step can be viewed with energy, force and stress detail. We can display molecule of course well molecules and I am looking for um surface. We can also construct and display surfaces. Thanks to its simple C OpenGL engine, JD smoothly displays systems with thousand atoms and even when displaying animations. Today's interest is USPEX integration for which all output can be displayed with the exception of transition path sampling. Since USPEX has provided us with some examples, let's open all of them at once. GDIS reads the output file from USPEX but only a few information is taken from it. GDIS actually gets results from several files in the output directory. As expected, the TPS example can be open, but all other open just fine. You have a representation of USPEX examples. For all output, it consists of a whole graph with all structure energy versus generation, and best structure in red are given in a separated best graph. The reason for this is to be able to select the proper best structure, which can be tricky. While it is easy on a separated graph. Have a look at the different USPEX examples. Well, I am looking for um, there it is, a viable composition example. As you can see, unlike single composition, there are many possible best structures. 
Results are also presented in a different graph with relative to each element composition the formation energy of each structure. Atomic ratio is relative to the atom total number. Total energy, volume, space group and formula of the selected structure is also displayed. It is also rendered in the main screen. The formation energy of a structure is given relative to each elementary constituent. The reference energy is taken from new specs as the lowest energy single element structure, in this example a pure molybdenum cell. This is the molybdenum reference. Another kind of U-spec calculation is the variable cell NEB optimization. The pathway between two structures is given in the path graph. Here it makes sense to display the animation which actually corresponds to the calculated transition path. Variable composition with more than two species is a little different case. Here the composition graph is unchanged, which means formation energy versus atomic ratio. However, the reference energy does not correspond to the graph extremum anymore. This means that the convex error does not necessarily show thermodynamically stable structure. For example, we have AB and AC. They both have the same A ratio, but both could be stable depending on B and C chemical potential. In other cases, here at surface optimization, the reference energy are not available, so the convex curve is shown for total energy per atom. This is why I introduced a simple way to set our reference energies, so we can use an external calculation. Let's take the previous surface example. We just need to create the directory and use uspex to copy the example. As you can see, this is the same surface example. Now we need to know the species ordering, which is available in the parameter.txt file. Palladium is first and oxygen is second. Now let's create a very small file, chem.in, which will contain our references. For energies, I use the web database at the following address, which I very strongly recommend. But of course, for real case, you will have to perform your own reference calculations. Here I will just copy the uncorrected energy because of similar calculation settings. Now all we need is to enter a detail for palladium. Atom number is 1 because energy is per atom. Now we need to do the same for oxygen. 
Not that oxygen reference should be the oxygen molecule. Let's save the chem.in file. And reload the example with GDIS. All and base graph are unchanged. Will composition 1 no contain a formation energy? Note that the energy no starts above zero. In addition to analyzing USPEX results, we can perform complementary calculations using VASP or GURB from USPEX results. Let's start from the previous variable composition example. We create directory and copy examples similarly as before. Let's open this example. It is really just the same viable composition example as before. Let's say that I'm interested in the most stable structure. What I'm gonna do is, I will set up a vast calculation from the current structure. I set up a geometry optimization and set unknown from the electronic state at a medium k point grade. This preset engine will fill the incur with recommended default. I will just set my optimized algorithm. Also I want to know about the electronic state. Conjugate gradient is just fine for me. Ah, I really like the podcar interface that allow you to create just any podcar from the directory where you unpack them. You can of course create any flavor, here a semi valence for molybdenum. Just don't forget to apply the change. Don't forget to set a working directory, or this file will be in the current one. Here I create a vast directory in the example one. And all there is to do now is to save and execute. So the calculation is running, but where is it? You can actually see it on the task manager. You might be familiar with the VASP output. Now let's accelerate the time until we finish the first ionic step. There it is, a new graph appears with SCF energies. Diamond symbols correspond to ionic steps. And step information is displayed here. Information is updated for each step. Let's accelerate time again until the end of calculation. There it is! Since VASP output is always updated, we need to stop tracking. This is VASP optimizer structure. The final energy, force and stress is here. We need to reload VASP output though, to load the electronic structure. Now let's open the plot dialog and look for the electronic structure. 
Let's plot the band diagram just as an example. The Fermi level is at 0 EV and is plotted as an horizontal line. So that material property seems metallic semiconducting or insulating. We can also look at some structural parameters like distances. For example, if I want to know the shortest molybdenum borne distance, which is larger than 2 angstrom, sorry, all distance lower than 2.3 angstrom are simply displayed. Another interesting development is to launch several USPEX calculations from a previous result. So let's make the specific directory and all files inside read-write, so that we can steer them to our new USPEX calculations. Let's open the example as before. So we want to practice USPEX with a little less structures. Let's open the USPEX calculation dialog and set up a new calculation with a new name. We can also change the type and if you don't know a parameter, Tooltip will provide you some information and a connection to the official USPEX manual. Setting the calculation directory is mandatory. Here I create a new directory inside the example one. And we are going to reuse the specific directory. Now let's save and execute. Let's see on the task manager what is the status of the calculation. You may recognize the USPEX output and let's wait for the first structure. There it is! The display is the same as completed calculations. But of course all graphs are empty. Graph will be filled live with a green color for the current generation. When two reference energies are calculated, the composition graph is rescored for formation energy. When the generation is done, its color goes black. The best structure and best graph are only updated once per generation. Let's speed up to the next generation. Let's set up another USPEX calculation. We can give it an optional different name. To make a difference, let's calculate the double amount of structures.
let's not forget to set a working directory here I will create another new one let's import a specific directory again and save and run and it's gone task manager now shows two uspex jobs and as previous we need to wait for the first structure now you must be quite familiar with what is happening So let's speed up to the first generation. The first generation is completed with a double amount of structures. During that time, in first calculation, many generations have been done. Let's wrap to the end of calculations. As you can see, the results of both calculations are quite different, including stable structures. Now, let's set up a VC and EB calculation. We use the same commands as before to retrieve the VC and EB example. Since we are going to use the same directory, we have to move out the right protected input. As an example, let's increase the number of images. VC and EB calculation is set and it have a specific tab where we can modify the image number. Similarly to other calculations, we have to set the output directory. Since I select the same directory as example, I don't need to copy the specific one. Let's run. We can see the job in the task manager and now we have to wait for the first step. Here it is. The number of images has increased. Let's jump to the end of calculation. Voila!
as you can see the graph is more even and the animation of a pathway is smooth This concludes today's tutorial. I thank you for your attention and please don't hesitate to ask questions.